Hi, I'm Kimil, and I'm the voice behind Kim with Kim. Get it? In this video, in this session, we're going to be working question two of chemistry paper two from the January 2019 sitting. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, please check out all the material that is here. Share with your friends if you find value. Also, give it a thumbs up to help the channel grow and subscribe if you haven't done so and turn on post notifications so you will be notified. You'll be alerted the moment new material is added. Let's just get right into it. Table two lists the chemical symbols of elements in period three of the periodic table and their respective atomic numbers. Right, we're seeing sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, 11 to 18, part A. Explain why these elements are all placed in period three of the periodic table. No, elements are arranged in the periodic table according to increase in atomic number, yes. They're arranged in the periodic table according to chemical properties, but they're also arranged in the periodic table according to their electronic structure. And that one is broken down. We look at what number is in there, what number you have for the valence, the last number in electronic configuration, pretty much. Or you also you look for how many numbers you have in their electronic configuration, which is what tells you which period they're placed in. So they're placed in period three based on the number of shells that they have. So all these elements here, they have three shells. Electrons are being added to the third energy level. So if we were to look at the traditional electronic configuration for sodium, for example, we will see that the electronic configuration, electronic configuration for sodium is two, eight, one for magnesium, it's two, eight, two. For aluminum, it's two, eight, three. Silicon, it's two, eight, four. Phosphorus, two, eight, five. Sulfur, two, eight, six. Chlorine, two, eight, seven. And argon, two, eight, eight. I always hope that no one is passing my class and you know, hear me saying two, eight, two and thinking that I'm saying the time, the, the, the time stable, 282, 283, 284. But we're just talking about the electronic configuration. So there are three shells, so they are in period three. So let's get that down. So these elements are in period three because they have three electron shells, or we could say the third shell is being filled. Electrons are being added to the third shell. Which element, part B, which element in table two forms an oxide which readily dissolves in water to give a solution with a pH greater than seven? Write a balanced equation to support your answer. So, pH above seven, we're talking about something that's um, basic. So it could work with sodium or magnesium. I'm going to work with the first one, sodium. Is somebody saying no? Well, it's actually sodium. So sodium will work. So that will give us an alkali and the equation, sodium reacting with water. So sodium is a solid plus water. H2O, which is a liquid, and that will give us sodium hydroxide, which is aqueous, and hydrogen gas. That's H2 gas. And of course, we would need to we would need to balance. Let's use a different color to, to, to balance. So we need a two here. That makes it four hydrogen, yes, two oxygen, but 
probably should have explained what's happening. We have, we have with well, let's go. So there's one sodium on the left, one sodium on the right. Two hydrogens on the left, three hydrogens on the right. Um, two can never catch up three. So we can, um, do, we can do some modification. We can put a two right here that will change the hydrogen to four, but we, we would still have three hydrogens on the right. So we need to put a two in front of the sodium to make the hydrogen that's here two. So the total number of hydrogens would be four because the two here is saying everything that comes after the two is multiplied by two. So it means that we have a total of four hydrogens now. On the right, we have four hydrogens as well. So hydrogens check water, two each, two on the left, two on the right. This two in front of the sodium means that we need two in front of the sodium on the left to ensure that everything is in check. So that's that. Part C, the element sulfur can exist as different as Allotrope. So, was to an element existing in different form, different forms. So they will have um, different chemical properties, but same. Sorry, they will have different physical properties, but same chemical properties. Part D, draw a diagram to show the arrangement of electrons in sulfur. All right, so we're going to show what's in the center first. That's the nucleus where we would have 16 protons and um, 16 neutrons, All right? And some books will show you um, a shell around this or a circle around this. For the nucleus, some will put a dot in the middle. So I'm using a circle to show the, the nucleus. If you don't use a circle, it's fine. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to actually keep this um, ring right here. So this is the first shell. Sulfur is um, 16. So we have 16 protons, 16 electrons. So that's the first shell. Second one, you said two, eight, six earlier. And remember, we pair the electrons, two, four, six, eight. And then the third shell would have one, two, three, four, five, six. And that would give us two marks. E, part one. State the type of bond that forms when sulfur reacts with chlorine. Well, sulfur is a nonmetal. Chlorine is also a nonmetal. So when non-metals combine or when non-metals bond, we end up with a covalent bond. So the bond is bond, covalent bond. All right, so this is a covalent bond. Co means sharing, valent, referring to the electrons in the valent shell. So there's some sharing taking place and we're kind of, we answered part two in a sense, explain why, the type, explain why the type of bond stated in EI is formed for all of three marks. So we'll state sulfur, and I spell it with a PH, sulfur and chlorine are both So sulfur and chlorine, they are non-metals. And when non-metals bond with each other, the bonding is covalent, sharing of the valence electrons. Check.
F, F. Write the formula of a compound which is formed when sulfur reacts with chlorine. Okay, so sulfur, we said earlier, it's 286. Chlorine is 287. Of course, we could just straight up write the formula, but I want us to see where it's coming from. Sulfur needs two to complete its octet. Chlorine needs one. So when they share electron, sulfur would share with two chlorine. And we're going to look at what happens in G. So the formula would be, or if we continue, sulfur needs, let's use blue to show how many sulfur needs. Sulfur needs two, chlorine needs one. So the LCM of two and one is two. Two into two goes one. One into two, two. So it tells us how many sulfur we're going to need and how many chlorine we're going to need. All right, just a, a little math right there. So this formula is going to be SCL2. And I want us to draw in G, draw a dot and cross diagram to show the bonding in the compound stated in F. All right, so. Sharing of electron is going to be taking place. So we'll put, we're just going to write the symbol and we're going to use only the valence electrons. All right, so. So we'll need to show six electrons in, in sulfur. We know chlorine has seven. I'm using that and cross. The electrons are identical, but we just want to show the variation. So we know which one is coming from the chlorine. So chlorine, we said chlorine is 287, sulfur is 286. So when we put a chlorine beside this, using um, hugs and kisses, as we said earlier, So that is what we'll have. So when we're counting the electrons, when we're counting the electrons in chlorine, we would count, um, let's look at, um, so this is the final thing. I'm just going to use a little, um, I'm going to highlight so we see what's happening. These electrons here, these electrons are being shared. So they both belong, where we see the overlap, those electrons both belong to the chlorine and the sulfur. So sharing is taking place right there. All right, so that is that. So you can ignore the highlighted part. I just wanted to show. All right, so when you're counting, if you look around sulfur, you'd have eight surrounding it. If you look around each chlorine atom, you'd have eight surrounding it. So they would have a complete octet. And that is what would make them stable. The whole point of them bonded in the first place so they can achieve noble gas configuration. And we've come to the end of this question uh, and this session. So I just want to say, please check out the other materials that are here like this. Subscribe for more, share with a friend, leave a like and couple later.